If you're on, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my August book haul video, but it's going to be a little bit different because I usually do monthly-ish, but uh, not this time. I cheated and I decided to accumulate a bunch of classic books in the last three months to do a video just about classics because I have been loving them again. I have a minor in French literature, so I've read my fair share of French classics in university, but I kind of got sick of them because of it probably, uh, and I stopped reading them for a couple years. But this year with the book club on Patreon, we started doing a classic book club for uh, every two months. So we've been, we've been doing that and out of the three so far that we've read, two are now all-time favorites. So I'm super happy to be rediscovering them. So I've been accumulating them whenever I go thrift book shopping and I'm really excited to read some of them with you probably next year if you want to. We'll vote later on uh, and feel free to leave me some recommendations in the comment section. We're currently reading actually Crime and Punishment, which I was terrified of French, not French, Russian classics. So I'm happy we're doing this together. So yes, I've accumulated some. I'm very excited about them. So let's get to it. Uh, the first one is North and South, which I started watching the TV show <laughs> and I realized oh, it's actually a book, a classic. So let me actually stop that. I was enjoying it, but I want to read the book first. And this is a classic written by a woman too, which I've been trying to balance out uh, female and male authors in the book club, which is gonna be harder to do long-term, but for now we still have enough to do like 50-50-ish. So I think this could be a really good one to read together. It has really great review. I don't know how close it is to a TV show, but so far I was enjoying it. And it's not too big, which we, we will want to balance out some of the big ones that we have planned. So very excited to have that copy. Uh, I also have a ton of French classics because, of course, um, I realized that there's a few plays that I feel like I know the topic of, but I've never read them. So really, I don't know. I don't know at all. Uh, a good example of that would be Don Juan by Molière. I really don't know. Like, all I know is like a man sleeping with a bunch of women. <laughs> That's literally all I know. And there's probably a little bit more to it in the last 150 pages. Um, so, you know. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea to pick it up and hopefully I actually enjoy it. But I mean, if it's that popular, it might be worth reading. And the second one is Cyrano de Bergerac, which again, all I know is like the man with the big nose telling the other man what to say. <laughs> which a great summary, Emily. Uh, that's definitely probably close enough, right? Um, so I'm going to be reading it and we'll see if it's actually close or not. <laughs> the only thing is I had seen it um, a couple times in English. And they were like half the size. This is like 400 pages. And the English editions that I've seen were like 200. So I don't know why the French one is so much bigger. There's definitely just that. That's what I was looking for. Um, so I don't know. I know French can be a little bit lengthier than English, but it's like, it's not Norwegian. Like it shouldn't be that much longer. So we'll see. But again, I wanted to try them and decide how I feel about them when I know the whole story. Uh, okay, I've been joking around for the last couple of years that I would never read Les Miserables by Victor Hugo because it's way too freaking big. It's like almost 2,000 pages. It, there's no reason for a book this big. Um, I understand that, you know, they were paid per word kind of thing, but like it's too big. And I don't even know the story because I've been avoiding it knowing I was never going to read it. With that said, uh, I saw this little book by him uh, at the thrift store and I decided I'm gonna take this as a sign to at least try his writing. Because if I really love the way he writes, I can, you know, go to the next step and read Notre Dame de Paris, for example, which isn't as big as Les Miserables. And then if I like that, then maybe I will want to actually read Les Miserables. So this is Le Dernier Jour de Condamné, which is, uh, you're following the story of a man that is supposed to be uh, killed, I'm assuming the next day, and uh, he's waiting basically. And the book is apparently about everything but, so it has nothing to do with what he did and it's just his last day. So I believe that the author is writing this book essentially to show you how ridiculous the whole situation is. So I'm curious, it's not too big too, it's like 200 pages-ish, so less intimidating than 2000, not gonna lie. So I'll be testing that and I'll let you know. Hopefully it's as good as it looks. Uh, then we have Belle Ami by Guy de Maupassant, which I believe I've read Le Orla by him, which is like a sh horror ish short story. I feel like everyone around me had to read that in high school, which might just be like a Canadian thing or a French Canadian thing, I don't know. But everyone has read this around here. Uh, so this is like a full length novel by him. And I believe this is about uh, a young man trying to make it in society, which seems to be the plot of like half the novels, <laughs> classic novels. So. so I think this is what this one is about, but I wanted to try a full, say, full length novel by him to see um, if I like his writing or not and see if I want to pick more by him. And then I also have Le Rouge et le Noir, which 
I believe this one is more controversial. Is that possible? I feel like the reviews are more divided. I think someone gave up on this book from university because look how great it looks. And it's saying, it says 2022. Uh, so I'm assuming someone gave up and uh, lucky me because now I have this edition. <laughs> but I believe this is also once again, uh, yep, a young man trying to make it in society. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. This one is pretty chunky. So we might read it together. I want to read at least one French classic. Obviously you don't have to read in French, but you know, I am trying to keep my French okay. Um, I feel like I'm still in the awkward phase where like my English is fine, my French is fine, but neither is like feeling perfect <laughs> anymore. Uh, okay, the next bunch are technically they were already mine, but I don't know if your parents do that But my dad is trying to empty his house and he's bringing me boxes of crap He doesn't want anymore, which like some stuff is fine Like I have some of like the mugs from my grandma like the fancy little mugs, but Some stuff I don't really want to be fair This box did contain books that were mine not all of them But some of them and they were classics So I decided you know what I'll just announce to the world that they are now on my shelves That way I can let you know how I feel about these or maybe I need to reread them because it's been too long uh, The first one is L'étranger d'Albert Camus, which I a very short little book I had to read this three times for three different classes And I didn't like it all three times and frankly the worst part is that part of me wonders if I tried it again Maybe it would feel differently I don't know why my brain is like this because chances are I, I wouldn't uh, I don't really care for the whole meh. Uh, I can't even pretend that like oh you just didn't get it because you know I've read it three times for three different class We've analyzed it three different times. So I think I should probably just be officially done with it I probably will be keeping it on my shelf anyway because I don't know if you've noticed um, But look at the spine in French and English Hopefully my camera will co cooperate, but it's backward like, why are they doing this? Um, I can't put French and English book on the same shelf. Um, luckily, I do have the space, or I will have the space whenever I finish the library, but like, I can't do that. So unfortunately, I will have to hoard um, more books in this edition for your classics, which are floppy, which luckily, I, I like the mass market paperback that are floppy, so we're okay, they're the exception, but yeah, it's unfortunate. I will have to buy more books. Um, <laughs> And uh, then we have Le Parcourio by uh, Honoré Balzac, which I have had to read so many Balzac books in um, university. Which, fun fact, not everyone knows, but one reason I think his work is interesting is that they're all like inter interconnected. So like if you read one book, some of the side characters, you'll have their full story in a different book. So like the more you read, the more you know. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, but yes, Le Parcourio, I... It was fine, it was fine, honestly. Actually, fun fact, my mom wanted me to be called Eugenie, which is the perfect little daughter in this book, but my cousin told her I would be bullied to death, which she was right, so I'm grateful that they did not go with that. Then we have Thérèse Raquin by Émile Zola. Honestly, do not remember anything about this. I'm, I'm shocked, did I even read this? Maybe if I learned what it was about, maybe I would remember, but I remember Germinal by him, the one about the mines, but this one, no thoughts, no clue, no idea. Let me know if it's good. So I can re-add it to my TBR, uh, but at the moment I, I would have to go and read the summary because no idea. Speaking of which, these ones are short story or like poems, so I, I think it's less bad to not remember anything. I just need to remove all the post-its, but I will be keeping them because they match the same edition. So I have uh, Poésie et autres textes by Malarmé, so just poems. Uh, and then we have Je dis la guerre by Verlaine, so again, no thoughts, so they're just there now. <laughs> I know, very useful. Uh, then, we have two books that I had to read in high school. They're like Quebec literature. And the first one was actually good, if it's the one I'm remembering. Uh, La Promesse de l'eau by Romain Gary, Which, this one, uh, I believe it's the one that a little girl makes him eat a shoe when he's a kid. If that's the book, then it was really good. So I need to reread this because I remember it, it being good. But again, it's been, it's been a little while now. Uh, the other one, um, okay. La Vallée des Avallées by Régent de Charme, which this one is like a coming of age kind of story. Uh, fun fact, the author absolutely hated journalists and there's basically no pictures of him that exist. I remember like uh, we saw like the only picture pretty much of him, which is him yelling at a journalist taking his picture. So <laughs> he would hate social media, but I don't remember that much more about the book. Uh, to be honest, every time I look at it, all I can think about is what our teacher told us. It was the last year of high school, so we were like, what, 16? And he told us, all the girls in the class, that we were currently at our peak of attractiveness. Oh yeah, he said that out loud. Um, 
Honestly, I've thought about this way too many times since then and I can't believe it. It's, uh, yeah. And pretty much ever since I've had this book in my house, I've thought about this every day. So maybe I shouldn't keep the book because not impressed. Uh, frankly, I was too young at the time to say anything, but like looking back, I wish I could have told him, Monsieur Sommel, you're creep. This is disgusting. He was like 50 something, like so messed up. Anyway, uh, last but definitely not least, I have a classic sci-fi, which it counts, it counts. Um, this one, which is uh, The Invisible Men, I actually have another book by the author on my shelf, War of The War of the Worlds, which I still haven't read, but I picked it up right now because of the edition. Not gonna lie, this is the SF Masterworks. I often get questioned about the yellow books in the background. They're just classic sci-fi and I just like the edition. They're cute and I'm trying to accumulate, hoard, uh, all of them. Well, all the ones I'm interested in, I'm trying to stick to that so I can have a full shelf of them. Uh, they're getting harder to find though, so I might become less difficult and less picky, but I found this one and I've been meaning to read this one. It's also not too big for a classic sci-fi, so hopefully I enjoy it. So these are all the books that I've accumulated, but I'm really, really curious to hear which books you would like me to pick up for the book club next year, because so far I've started making a list because I, I wanted to and I can. So I already want to read probably um, Anna Karenina or like the brother Karamazov. Uh, there's also Middlemarch. I have one uh, Jane Austen left, which is Mansfield Park. So like that's already a couple that we could be reading. Like I said, we could be reading Norton South. If you have anything else you think we would enjoy to read together, let me know. Let me know because I mean, I'm open to hoarding more books, especially if they are full year classics. <laughs> Seriously, why are they backward? I don't understand. It's ugh. anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, again, let me know in the comment section. Or let me know also which ones I should read ASAP because I want to start reading some uh, more regularly. I mean, I'm reading one every two months with the book club, but just generally want to read more because I'm enjoying myself again, finally. So thumbs up, subscribe, you don't want to miss that. I actually should do a video about some favorite classics soon and I will be putting uh, more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see an upcoming video very soon. Bye.